God. <laughs> All right, so my wife is playing with the dogs. Anyway. What's up everyone, my name is Brenner, welcome to my channel. This is Mr. Liquor Zipper and this is Whiskey Proof News. Is it really news though at this point? I don't know. Uh, anyway, this is Whiskey Proof News. So the last couple of days I did the 20 to $30 best bourbons, the 30 to $40 best bourbons. So why not do the 40 to $50 best bourbons? If you're interested in seeing what are the top five best bourbons, 40 to $50, then stay tuned. Let's go. All right, so number one on the list, we have Four Roses Single Barrel. Now, exactly what it is, this bottle can be considered complex, but very well balanced, and has some spice to it. Very much like the former Four Roses, um, this Four Roses still has a little bit of that floral design to it, if you will. Um, now, what this is not, it's not the biggest and boldest flavor, it is not the smoothest, and it may not be the easiest of drinkers for those that are just coming into the bourbon slash whiskey game. This is not very hard to find. It's pretty easy, you should be able to pick this up at Total Wine uh, or basically anywhere where you're looking. Recommendations for drinking, you drink it how you like it, neat, straight, on the rocks, you mix it in a cocktail or with a little spit of water, just don't spit in someone else's whiskey. This bottle comes out of Kieran Brewery Company. It is distilled by Four Roses, Kentucky. Out of Kentucky, proof is 100 proof, and we have a very fair price between 40 to $45. And just a little bit of information, so you have um, the single barrel bourbon is always their OBSV recipe, O equaling the produced at Four Roses Distillery, B equaling mash bill of 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% malted barley, S equals the straight whiskey, V equals yeast strain with characteristics of light fruitness, light vanilla, caramel, and creamy. Now at 100 proof, this bourbon is uh, full flavored, and it is incredibly enjoyable and could potentially be a daily sipper. Number two, 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 two on the list, list. It's Knob Creek, single barrel. Now what this bottle is, it is big, bold flavor. It has nice, sweet elements, and it's very, very easy to find, so it's very accommodating. Now what it isn't, it's not the most unique flavor, and I would not say, because of the proof, I would not say this is the easiest uh, of drinkers or smoothest of drinkers, especially for the noobs that are out there. Now, is this bottle hard to find? Not really, it's relatively um, easy to find. Um, I recommend drinking this neat straight up on the rocks with a splash of something or other to uh, taper down that proof which we're about to jump into. So this bottle comes from the company Beam Centauri. Its distillery is Jim Beam itself out of Kentucky. The proof comes in at 120 proof, which is why I was disclosing why I don't think this would be the greatest for um, the people that are just getting into the whiskey game. Um, but it does come in at a very fair price between 40 to $45 for that high of a proof and that price point. Um, you're, you're getting a good uh, bang for your buck. Next on the list is uh, another up and comer for my own personal palate is Russell's Reserve uh, Single Barrel. This is a 10 year aged. Um, now what this is is big bold flavor, unique flavor, complex. Um, but what it isn't, it's not consistently priced unfortunately. Um, it could range with it, like it swings within $10 of itself. Uh, it's, it is a smooth and easy drinker for me personally. A lot of these things on a list because of the, um, the amount that you're paying for it, you are gonna get a little bit higher of a proof. So a lot of these uh, bottles in particular are probably not gonna be the best for the newbies. This is not a hard bottle to find. Pretty sure you can go into any specs or any uh, total wine or whatever, um, you know, place you have that's selling alcohol, you should be able to pick this up relatively easily. Um, I recommend drinking this how the fuck you want to drink this. Um, it, it's always the same thing. You're either going to want to drink this neat straight up on the rocks or with a splash of water. I typically personally like to initially sip it neat to see how the actual flavors are um, just without any additives and then I will go into it sipping it the way I naturally like it was with the three ice cubes that is my own personal uh, 
my own personal thing that I like to do. But what you like to do, maybe you could take it from me. Try out the three cubes. Let me know what you like or let me know if you like it. <laughs> So a little bit of stuff behind this bottle is that the Wild Turkey utilizes a standard mash bill of 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley, um, basically for all of their bourbons. Um, so you kind of know what you're going to get. I think the disclaimer comes in more that uh, this particular bottle is aged up to 10 years, um, though they do have, uh, most barrels are rumored to be between 8 to 9 years of age. And next on the list, we have Woodford Double Oaked. I feel like you can't have a $45 to $50 range um, without having this on the list. This, to me, um, is a staple, a staple, a staple. Get it right. It's a staple in anybody's uh, collection of bourbon. This is one of my number one go-tos, which is why I don't have one right now because I did drink it all. I think I even did that in another video because I was talking about um, the double oak. Oh, it's right over and there was nothing there because I recently finished it and I forgot. Must have been a fun night. Um, so what this bottle is, it, it is easy to find. It is very well balanced. It is super smooth. Um, now what it's not, it's not very spicy and uh, it doesn't have the biggest and boldest of flavors, but it does have flavors that I haven't really tasted in some of the other ones. Um, I, on the back end, especially on the back end, I think is what gets me to enjoy this bottle so much is the darker chocolate elements that I get at the very tail end um, and that, that strong uh, dark chocolate aftertaste. I don't know why, it's what I get. Um, that's just me. I recommend drinking this in a neat fashion, in a straight up fashion, on the rocks. You can mix it with uh, maybe doing some type of cocktail or something like that. Overall, this bottle is just super enjoyable alone by itself. Uh, so this bottle comes out of the company Brown Foreman. It is distilled by Woodford Reserve uh, and Brown Foreman Distillery out of Kentucky. The proof comes in at 90.4, which makes it an uh, easy sipper, I would say, even if you have been in the game only a year or so. Uh, 90 proof, you're not really uh, tearing your tongue up or burning the shit out of your esophagus too much. It's it's very enjoyable drink, um, and it comes in at a fair price of $45 to $54. Next on on the list is Old Forester 1897. What this bottle is, it is a little bit complex, but it is very well balanced. Um, the only slight issue you may have with this is that it may require a little bit of research as to where you can find it, where you can buy it or pick it up. Um, it's not consistently priced, it is not a simple bourbon, and it may not be the smoothest or easiest of drinkers for those just coming into the game. I recommend drinking this um, neat, mixed, and again, as I always say, just drink it how you like it. There's a lot of uh, controversy out there as how things should be, and there's a lot of purists uh, that say, you know, you shouldn't dilute anything with or dilute any bourbon with anything else outside of what the bourbon is. And um, so, in some instances, I agree because I do love drinking everything neat or with a couple of ice cubes, but let's not tear people a new asshole because of the way they like to drink it. All in all, we're here to uh, do the same thing, and that's to enjoy ourselves and have a good time. Anyway, off the soapbox. So this bottle comes from Brown Foreman as well. The distillery is Brown Foreman Chivalry Distillery, Kentucky. Uh, the proof comes in at 100 proof with a very fair price of 50 to $55. And that's all five, but I feel like there should be a sixth one on the list. And again, I if I enjoy my whiskey, I don't just let it sit on my shelf, I drink it. Um, but there's a one note worthy that I feel we left off the list on this one. So we'll just add a number six for fun. And I'm going to add a rare breed wild turkey on here as it is a little bit of a step up from the wild turkey 101. It does check every box. It is a good daily sipper. It's something I, I enjoy sipping on the daily. Um, and it is comparable to 101. It's a little bit more uh, full of flavor than 101 is to me. But uh, either way, you can switch off back and forth or, you know, I still have a bottle of 101 up here somewhere. Um, if I don't have the rare breed, then that's gonna be the other one. Anyway, thanks for jumping into the whiskey glass with me and sipping on some information. Until next time, cheers and keep on sipping.